This is Katie, co-host of Coffee with Keeping Katie. Thanks for listening to the following broadcast on Public House Media. This is John Lauder, host of The Cheap Seats here on Public House Media. Thanks for listening to the following broadcast on Public House Media. Once you're done with this episode, I hope you'll come check out my show, The Cheap Seats, where we talk about sports from the fans' perspective. A new show comes out every Monday. Don't forget to subscribe on iTunes so you never miss an episode of The Cheap Seats. Thanks again for checking out the following broadcast on Public House Media. If there's too much bleach in the bleacher seats, you should have used detergent. Welcome to Completely Serious, that catchphrase courtesy of Bud C. Leak's mom. Thank you, Miss or Mrs. Don't want to assume anything. C. Leak for that submission. I didn't know you listened. Bud C. Leak, of course, the ninth commissioner of baseball. And we do thank his mom, his mother, for the submission. Welcome to Completely Serious. I'm Ryan Pierce, your host. And this is our one-year anniversary special big episode for us. Uh, one year and nearly a month ago, because I missed the actual one-year anniversary, we started Completely Serious as part of a, a Public House Media, and it's still here, thanks to you and Public House Media. If you have been on our show once, twice, or even three times, thank you as well. You can listen to our show on Spotify or Apple, iTunes, and other places too. And I want to share a quick story before I get to our wonderful guest today. A true story. I recently met a girl on Tinder, and she did her background research and came across this podcast on iTunes and noticed the five-star rating. So not only are you helping the show, you're helping my personal life by giving the podcast really whatever rating uh, you so desire on Apple iTunes. So thank you. And just as an update, we did not last. If that's not the reason you are listening today, you're listening because I'm bringing on today's guest of honor, Peoria Riverman broadcaster and director of media relations, Brad Kupiak. Brad was one of my personal favorite episodes, just don't tell the other episodes, in year one of the podcast and is joining us on our one year and nearly one month anniversary. Brad, I don't think podcasts have seasons. They're more of years. Or am I wrong, do you think, in saying that? No, I think you're you're correct. Podcasts are a, a year-round event for sure. <laughs> Well, thanks for jumping on the podcast. How have you been these days? Uh, you're in the off season between hockey seasons. You do some great baseball work as well. It's 95 degrees out and all the ice has melted, but how are you staying busy in the off season? I, I keep myself pretty busy doing a, a number of different things with Riverman, uh, social media, the website, doing some, some sales in the off season and just getting ourselves uh, ready for ready to go for 2018-19. It's, uh, it's a year-round job for sure, get running a pro hockey team. You're one of, what, maybe two people, three people that work full-time in the uh, front office. People don't realize these incredible sporting events that they go to. There's not a whole lot of people that really put this on. It's a select group of special people. Yeah, we have a, I believe, a five or six full-time front office staff now. That has to be kind of an awkward Christmas party because it's pretty much everybody you just saw earlier that day just wearing funny sweatshirts. Yeah, our, <laughs> we we pretty much have our office Christmas party is a day off because we're working so much, you know, year round. And with all our games being on weekends, it's, it's sometimes hard to, to work in a, an off day for, uh, for us during the season there. What are you doing now to get ready for the big upcoming year, which is somehow only a couple months away? Yeah. Um, right now we are working on getting everything laid out, getting everything lined up, um, with our, our ice logos, our ice here at the Peoria Civic Center goes in in, I believe, three weeks' time or so. So we're working on uh, making sure we've got all our ducks in a row for that because once the ice is in, the logos are, are laid and painted. That's It's set in stone for the year, so we got to make sure we've got everything as uh, as lined up as we can. And then it's just working on getting those those elements ready, getting you know the roster signed and announced, and, uh, and going as... As our coach signs players, getting all of that announced, getting our promotional calendar set up and lined up, and a uh, bunch of other kind of odds and ends around the office, making sure that things are are ready to go so we can hit the ground running uh, October 13th. We have a preseason game and wow. then our home opener on November 2nd. You mentioned Ducks. We're going to talk about the best hockey movies of all time a little later on, a little tease for some of those. Um, if you could have one super talent in hockey, would you rather be able to stop any puck at any second or be able to slap at a puck faster than the speed of sound? You know, I would have to go with the first one because mm. I was always a goalie growing up. I'm... I always loved uh, to stop pucks. I always dreamed of someday having a vanity license plate 
that was P U K S T T R because that's as many <laughs> letters as you can have. But uh, yeah, I was always a goalie growing up, so I'd have to say being able to stop any puck at any second. What's it like between the pipes uh, when you're there and they're firing the puck at you? It's really a, a, a position much different than I think any other in sports. Yes, I, I mean, in any other spot in sports, if a ball or a puck or something is coming at you at a, that rapid of a speed, you're usually trying to get out of the way. Baseball being the exception, you're trying to get your glove up there to catch it, but... <laughs> As a hockey goalie, you're trying to throw yourself into harm's way rather than trying to get out of it. What was the worst uh, hit from a puck did you ever receive in your in your playing career? Was it maybe one that went off the mask kind of weirdly, or, or what would it be? Uh, that would be tough to say because my playing career ended so <laughs> so young. I guess well, that's um, why you're in the booth then. Yeah, I don't, I don't really have any major any major puck related catastrophe in my history. There are so many good hockey movies out there. I think it's imperative that we rank them with having you, the hockey guru, on our show. If you haven't seen the movie, I'm going to give you five to pick from. And I want you to rank them in order one through five. If you haven't seen the movie, just I want you to guess how good it is based off the title. But my guess is you've seen a good chunk of these. So my five movies are... Actually, you know what? I'll give you... How about this? I'll give you the movie, and I want you to rank it one through ten, and we'll go by that in the end. So my first one is The Mighty Ducks uh, Trilogy, uh, Quadruple G, whatever, how many movies they have, I'm not sure. The Mighty Ducks series. Where, how would you rank Ooh, that as a hockey movie on 1 through 10 scale? That's a hard one because uh, uh, D2, The Mighty Ducks, is probably one of my favorite movies of all time and has been since I was a kid. Obviously, the original is the original, and, and I just wasn't a fan of D3. It was a fine movie. I just didn't really care for it, so it's hard to rank the, the series as a whole. I'd give the series as a whole a 7. Okay. And I would give D2 in particular a 10. I got you. So D2 brings it up. So D2 is yep. a 10. The series as a whole is a 7. We'll keep that in mind. Our second movie that is hockey-related is the movie based off a true story. We saw it on TV. Miracle. How about Miracle 1 through 10? What would that be? Miracle's got to be a 10 for me. Wow. I almost want to say 9.9 .9 because my 10 scale is Mystery Alaska, which is right up there neck and neck with Miracle for me. So Mystery Alaska is number one. We'll keep that one down because I don't have that on the list, but that is your number yep. one. Okay. Mystery Alaska Those are my 10. 1A and 1B is Mystery gotcha. Alaska and Miracle. Okay. How about Slapshot? What is that? Got to be up there as well. I'd have to give Slapshot a 9. Slapshot's a nine. Why is that? A, that's like considered to be the hockey movie. Why is that one a nine compared to Miracle as a ten and Mystery Alaska as a ten? Slapshot is just such a such a classic and such a great comedy. And I'm just I, I'm personally a big fan of inspirational sports movies, and uh, that's exactly. I mean, Miracle and Mystery Alaska check check all of those boxes for me. And but you can't rain Slapshot much lower because it's just such a such a classic with so many different quotable scenes how about the movie goon i've never seen this movie but people seem to like it the movie goon with i think the guy from american pie or is it the guy that looks like the guy from american pie i'm yep. not sure it yeah, is a john guy. william scott okay then uh that i've seen i've seen the original goon i have not yet seen goon 2 the last of the enforcers how about goon 1 what would you rank that one the original Whew. That's tough. That one I would have to give a seven because it's a okay. great hockey movie, and it's. I'm a big fan, but it's just. I, I I don't know. I just have a hard time rating it up there with, with those classics, and maybe in time it will be. But, but for me right now, and I haven't seen it in a while either, so that could be could be weighing into that. Okay, so here's the standings before we bring in my heavy hitter, my. <laughs> My personal favorite. <laughs> Mystery Alaska and Miracle are both 10s. And actually, D2 Mighty Ducks. Uh, Miracle's a 9.9. .9, I correct myself. Mystery Alaska, 10. Uh, D2 is right up there with Mystery Alaska and Miracle as your favorites. But as a series, Mighty Ducks is 7. So we're ranking that on a series. Slapshot is 9 and Goon is 7 as well. My personal favorite, Mike Myers, The Love Guru. Where do you rank that one? What What is it on a what scale of 1 to 10? I've not seen The Love Guru. <laughs> I've heard of it. Off its reputation, and, what would you rank it on a scale of 1 to 10? And from my, well, from my understanding, one of the coaches in our league now, he is a former uh, player for the Mississippi River Kings, was in the movie. Wow. That's actually pretty good. Uh, pretty little trivia there. Leo Thomas had a, had a role in it. And it was... Uh, I... 
I'm going to say I'm unable to give that one a ranking because I have not personally seen it. Mm. I, I do like it. Unfortunately, it ended Mike Myers' career. It got a, uh, a 14%. <laughs> On Rotten Tomatoes, Mike Myers was never the same, although he was an extremely funny comedian. 33% in terms of uh, fan review, so one-third of fans liked it. But uh, it was something. So here we go. The best hockey movies of all time. Mystery Alaska. Miracles right there with a 9.9. Uh, Slapshot's got a 9. The Mighty Duck series is a 7. However, D2 is a 10, and Goon is a 7. The rankings from Hockey Guru. Not Love Guru. That one is uh, unranked. <laughs> uh, Brad Kupiak. Okay. Um, Brad, got a few more hockey questions for you. Thanks for jumping on completely serious. Um, if you could write a hockey movie, what would it be about? Well, it would have to be what I've been able to witness and live here the last three years with the Peoria Rivermen, just with maybe a little bit different ending as, as someone who's worked for a team who spent the last three years going to the, the finals and the league championship and getting, especially within one game this past season. I would write pretty much the last three years of what's happened with the Rivermen, except uh, I would give the Rivermen a win in Game 3 of the Finals uh, last year against Huntsville. What's it, it's such a tricky position to be in when uh, you have a great team and you come in second all the time. Buffalo Bills feel it. People in my fantasy football league feel it when I take the victory. What, what, what is, <laughs> how do you compartmentalize? How do you think about a season when you're so good all the time yet you're just a little bit off the championship? That's just the the reality that we've lived with here in Peoria for the last few years, unfortunately. I, fortunately or unfortunately, I mean, to have such a great team and be so successful throughout the season and just just be that close and, and to spend the last three years, you know, signing off as a broadcaster for the last time, watching some other team, you know, hoist the championship trophy is always is always tough. How do you make that call as a, a broadcaster? You're trying to put it in perspective. You have this incredible celebration before you, but it's such a heartbreaking moment for your team. Right, yeah, and that's and that's, you know, the age old problem with broadcasters between you know, it's there's a fine line of knowing who your primary listening audience is and knowing which team you're employed by and and which team you you know, obviously work for and spend the whole season with versus trying not to be too over the top Homer, which is, uh, I mean, every broadcaster does that a little bit differently and every broadcaster is a little bit in a different spot on that spectrum. So it's, uh, it's, it's definitely tricky. Brad Kupia, thanks for jumping on the podcast. I need to get though, before I let you leave, because we need to know uh, what has been your favorite story from the team on the bus or locker room from the past season because I think we asked this to you last time you gave us such a good response but what was it for this past season well the one that sticks out to me this past season so one day we were on the bus on our way down to Fayetteville North Carolina so we're going through the state of Virginia we stopped at a a truck stop so the bus could get gas and we could all get some food there was a a McDonald's and a Subway and a you know typical assortment there and so our trainer, our equipment manager, and I are sitting down at a table, and we're just, you know, eating our eating our lunch. And then here we see our coach walking in front of the window and coming around to the door, and he's got on his head this this gladiator helmet, this mask that he found at the the gas station <laughs> uh, convenience store, <laughs> and and it is in his. French accent because he's a French Canadian gentleman recites the entire speech from the movie Gladiator where he says my name is Maximus Decimus Meridius on and on and on <laughs> and, and we all just died we couldn't we couldn't contain our laughter and that helmet became the trophy awarded to the player of the game for the rest of the year Brad Kupia great story caster and director of media relations for the Peoria Riverman thanks for jumping on completely serious remind people where they can find you online and where they can find the Riverman online uh, yeah, so the Rivermen, we're on uh, pretty much every social media platform. Our main website is at rivermen.net. Uh, on Facebook, Peoria Rivermen. Twitter, Peoria uh, underscore Rivermen. On Instagram, P-E-O underscore Rivermen. And on uh, Snapchat, you can follow us as well at Rivermen underscore Hockey. Yeah, rivermen.net. Uh, we got a preseason game October 13th. Regular season starts October 20th. Wonderful. Brad Kupiak with the Peoria Rivermen. Thanks for jumping on. Thank you for listening to Completely Serious. This was our one-year and about one month anniversary special. We appreciate you tuning in. You can catch us every week on Public House Media. We'll talk with you, well, in two weeks.